Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's webinar here at Green Cooper. We're at Tiffany Green Golf Club in Kansas City, Missouri. And we're brought to you, as always, by Medicus Golf and Kick X Golf. Today's topic is effortless power versus powerful effort. Now, if you have any questions, just put them in the sidebar there, and uh, we will answer those when we get done. Hopefully, you've been watching a little bit of the BMW. I mean, they're going low, and uh, Brendan Todd just holed out from the fairway on the 18th hole. Oh, so hold on. For yeah. it, well, it yeah. must be an easy golf course because everybody is holding out. <laughs> so uh, today's not Red Friday. Yesterday was Red Thursday. But today's Black Friday. Today is after Black that Friday. Friday. That loss. After, after <laughs> that heartbreaking loss. Uh, at the end, we're also going to uh, have a little special tribute to Miss Diana, who is in California, that's working the controls on the webinar. Today is her uh, 26th or 7th birthday. So uh, we're going to give a big shout out to her a little later. And I know that she'll appreciate it. So let's talk about effortless power versus powerful effort. We see it every single day on the T-line. And when you go to play golf, look at on the T-line, you'll see the same people doing what we're going to do right now. So what you see is people making a backswing, and then the downswing, they are lunging their body as hard as they can, thinking that that's going to create speed and power. They've got to get the power in there. <laughs> so we see a ton of what we call upper body lunges to start the downswing. And, and basically, you're robbing yourself of power because if your chest and upper body is moving that hard, you cannot swing your arms. Right. Which is one of the main generators for power. Right. Your seat, your, the whole sequence of the downswing is out of whack. Right. So we're going to show you just a, a few drills here. I have a chair. And for those of you that aren't flexible enough, you know, and think you might have enough uh, flex in your swing, well, that's okay too. Uh, sit in the chair so you can isolate your arms and just swing that foot back and through. And swing it so you can hear it swishing. Okay, and as you'll notice, as I'm doing this, my hands are actually rotating over. And if you do this enough and you stand up and hit a golf ball, you'll probably hit a great big golf hook. Yeah. That just means you're doing it a little bit too much. Right. right. So that's one way. You need to isolate and feel your arms swinging. If your arms are tight, they can't swing. So, you know, somebody posted something the other day about a, a how, how tight should you hold your grip. Well, on a one to ten scale, I probably hold mine a good eight and a half or nine because I don't want the club twisting. But the key to doing that is you have to keep your wrists, elbows, and shoulders soft. Yeah. So, you know, when you make a backswing and you're trying to keep your left arm straight and all you're doing is hyperextending it, again, you've lost that flexibility and, and, the, and the ability to create more speed. Right. So, you know, every golfer or every person has some set, you know, normally, unless you're counting feet, has a degree of bend in their elbows, and that's somewhere between three and five degrees. So straight left arm is just how your arms hang. They're not locked, it's just how they hang. Yeah. And when you go back, it's how they hang. I mean, if you look at Jordan Spieth, he's got what they call a soft left elbow. Yeah. Uh, Curtis Strange did that. I mean, there, there's a bunch of players that have that, and that's okay to have. Harry Varden had it. Yeah. You know, so that, that is much preferable to dead, straight, and locked. Yeah. Right? Why don't you go ahead and do and, and show them that drill? Yeah, the other, the other drill, and, and this, this is one we, we use quite a bit, and Chuck will, will he'll go over the rope here in a second. But if you take an alignment rod, or if you take your club and just turn it around, but if I make a backswing here with this alignment rod, now if I try to use a lot of my upper body and just my body in general, I'm not going to get much of a swoosh out of there. But now if I just take it back and feel like, all right, I'm going to swing my arms as fast as I can, I got a lot more swoosh on it. Right. And again, we're just trying to free free these things up. You know, like we've talked before, the body will transport the arms, but it's not necessarily going to be the one driving all the power. You know, again, that's the sequence part. Right. And if you notice when Brendan did that, he didn't do that. But he kept his body still and just swung his arm. Right. I mean, as he swung his arms, the movement happened. 
but you weren't thinking about the movement. Just exactly. Yeah. It didn't cross my mind. I said, okay, how fast can I swing my arms and make this thing go and my body supported that? Right. So, and then we use ropes quite a bit. Uh, been using them for a number of years, so it's, so it's really nothing new. But what you want to do with this rope drill, and you can make a rope, just double it like we have right here, uh, cut it the length of a five iron twice, mm -hmm. so it's double the length of a five iron. So when you take it back, I hope I don't slash you over here. Right. When you take it back, make sure you turn your chest and turn into your trail hip and let this lie on your shoulder. And as you start down, you're going to have just a little movement here. And as you do that, you swing your arms as fast as you can swing them. Go here, swing your arms. And you'll notice if I move my chest, that rope wants to swing yeah, over yeah, there. It'll pop me in the head. Okay, so, <laughs> and it won't have a very loud sound. Right. right. So those are three ways that you can speed up everything. Um, I would also suggest if you feel like you're, that you can't turn or you don't have enough flexibility, I would suggest turning both feet out, you know, 20, 25 degrees. And Greg Norman had a had a had a swing key when he was not only the number one player in the world, but the best driver of the golf ball. And that was called right hip back. Mm -hmm. So what he would do is he'd think about his right hip pocket going back towards his left heel. So when you open your feet up, that allows for your hips to turn more. So to get a little more hip turn. Just feel like you're turning your right hip back as far as you can towards your left heel. And in the downswing, now turn the left pocket back, but feel like it's turning towards the left heel. And now start getting it a little more open and get some room for the arm to swing. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I would probably want to add to that is, is we get asked a lot, well, should my left heel come off the ground if I do that? If it does, it does. Right. You know, we're not all flexible like the guys that we're seeing on TV. So. If your left heel comes up, that's fine. As right. long as the body's turning the way it should. Right. Too many times people say, oh, i got to keep my left heel down. Right. You, know, you do that, then you're not going to be able to get the right pocket back. Well, for, for example, I mean, and, and I'll stand at this end so you can see how much more hip turn. I'm going to leave my left foot down try to turn my hip back as far as I can. So it's right about there. I'm going to let my foot come up. I mean, I've almost got my belt yeah. up to you. So it's okay to let that thing come up because you can get more freedom with your turn. Yeah. Right? Nick, Nicholas did okay. Yeah, he did okay. Not bad. Yeah, a lot of those. A lot of those. Not bad. Old dudes did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to take a look. We have a bunch of questions here, so let's get started on them. All right. So the first question is, Craig, what is the first move in the downswing? Well, like we were talking a little bit ago, and I'm going to get this rope back out again since, since we've got it here. But if I take the rope and, and fold it up and swing it back here and, and let it get on my shoulders, you'll see in order for me to swing this, I'm going to, I'm going to watch my lead hip how I just kind of settle into my left. So a little bit of a bump right there. Not a big slide or anything, but when I start to go, I'm going to use the ground here to get things going. And that's going to get the left hip kind of bumpy and then swing it through. So. So you can see on that sequence there, I used the ground to get this hip going so it was more ground up and from top to bottom. The next question is from Travis. Chipping from 40 yards, what club? Well, first Travis, let's define what chipping is and isn't. Uh, from 40 yards, you would not be chipping. You would be pitching. All right, so that, that's a difference. Uh, chip shot is you don't want any angle form between your lead arm and club shaft. So think of chipping as a putt, where the lead arm and shaft stay in one line. So chipping would be a motion in this one. Pitching would be adding a little bit of that left wrist or target side wrist to the top. Mm -hmm. So what club should you use? It depends on what shot you want to get. Right. You know, look at your trajectory, how far you want to carry it. Uh, typically, rule of thumb, you want to fly the ball one third and then roll two thirds if you're trying to get it to roll out more. Yeah. So it's 40 yards in a back bend. If you have a higher trajectory shot, you want that's a that's low trajectory. A high trajectory shot, you carry it two thirds of the roll a third, and mid trajectory shot will give you 50 50 yards. Right. Okay. Right. So it depends on on 
the lie depends on where the pin is, depends on what the trajectory was. You could hit a uh, pitching wedge all the way up to lob wedge and hit 40 yard shots with all of them. Right. And then, like you're saying, it, it's, it's, you got to think the trajectory is going to dictate the club or the shot that you want to use. Right. Uh, like Chuck said, if the pin's up close, well, you want some loft. If you've got green to work with, it may be a pitching wedge, it be a nine. Right. It depends, right. depends on the wind and stuff right. like that. All right, let's see what our next question is. And this question is from Bob. When taking the club back and cock your hands, is the left hand cocked towards your face or is it turned under in a more parallel position? Okay, well, so your hands can do basically three things. They can cock and uncock, they can turn and roll, they can arch and they can bend. So if I'm cocking my wrist, which is a perpendicular motion, the only way you can cock your wrist is to do it perpendicular. If I roll the hands under, I'm not cocking the wrist. Right. Right. The board is just rolling it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're turning it more. Turning it. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. First, you have to first you get the definition of it. So, yes, you are. And in a good way, if you, if you feel like you're not cocking your wrist enough, the first thing you want to check is your grip. Make sure you have to grip down deeper in the fingers and not in the palm. Because if I hold it in my palm, I'll do it this angle. And I try to cock my wrist, that's all the angle I can get. I'll put more of my fingers, I can get that angle. Yeah. All right. And since this angle equals velocity, if I want to hit it farther, I've got to have this angle. Yeah, you got to have some of it. Yeah. You got to have some of it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, next question. This is from Richard. How do you add more lag to your swing? Oh, go ahead. Well, <laughs> to add some lag, it's, it kind of goes with what Chuck was saying earlier is, you know, you're not going to maintain much lag or get much lag if our arms are nice and stiff and connected to our body. So we've got to make sure our hands and arms are relatively soft because, you know, like Chuck showed earlier, if I go back, oh, I've got my left arm straight, I'm in good position. Well, I'm not, I'm too rigid here to maintain or create any more lag where, you know, to get that Hogan-esque Type of look that we always, everybody's always fond of. Right. You know, if my arms are soft and my hands are soft, and I start to change direction again, kind of like the question earlier, what starts the downswing? Well, I'm using my body to transport that. If they're soft, that club is going to resist going that other direction. Right. So that's going to give me some more lag. Yeah, there. because the club head is actually still going back while the hands are driving. Down. Exactly. So the, you know what you can do to train, kind of train yourself. Uh, for for lag a little bit, but just set up to a small chip shot, and what you want to do is move the grip in first, then the club head back. And when your hands change direction, I'll try to use the slow as I can. You'll see how the club will keep going back, and look at the amount. This would be no lag, and look at the amount of lag that's created by just changing the direction. But again, you have everything had to be soft. soft. There was not any any stiffness in the arms. Yeah, <laughs> and. and you know, you can, you look at Sergio, you look at Hogan and some of these players, and when they got up there and they started down, uh, this, this, this is probably the best time. When they, even though they had their wrists cocked right here, when they started down, their wrists were actually still moving towards them as the club head was moving back, and their elbow got in tight to them. So they kind of went like this. And that sets it back a little bit further. Patty Sheehan had the most lag of any human ever. She, she created it. Uh, I mean, she would get down here with a driver, and, and the driver still looked like that. That reminds me of a guy I saw do a video once, way yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. got lag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, Geta, my driver shot... Uh, goes to the right how always goes to the right how can i correct it all right so the question would be does it start right and stay right or does it start right curve right or start right and curve left some variables there yeah it's got a few variables <laughs> there. so we're going to assume that starting right and either staying right or curving right yeah so yeah the, the first thing if, if it's starting right that, that, that's obviously telling us the face is, is open a little bit there. So I would check ball position would be the first thing I would do. 
with with a driver, you know, the barrel. If I've got an iron, you know, the iron's going to be more slightly in front of middle, depending on the, the iron I'm hitting. But with the driver, we want to try to get it up off our lead shoulder. So if I'm a left or right-handed player, it's off my left shoulder. Here. So that's going to give the club just a little bit more time to get the face square. So first thing I do is check that. I want to make sure that that's in line there. Okay. If it's if it's curving to the right, well then that means we've got the path of it's going a little bit out to end. So, you know, I would also work on the sequence part, kind of like what we talked about earlier, is making sure that you know we're not trying to get here and, and do a lot of upper body movement to try to add power. We think that that's power. So maybe practice with the rope or practice with the rod there. Feel yourself when you're, if you're swinging the rope in order for me to start that sequence. I've got to kind of see how I let my body carry, and I'm going to swing my arms through. Okay, next question. All right, this one is from David. How do you stop the club from feeling heavy on the downswing so that effortless speed can be achieved? Well, you want the club head to feel heavy. Mm -hmm. Because the heavier it feels, the more the club has an opportunity to lag behind your hand. Right. Now, that you can't have too much. You can be like this, but you see the shaft and arm are out of line. Right? I can be right here, and I still have lag. Yeah. I don't have to be there. Right? So, well, my clubs are uh, E8, swing with eight, because I want to feel the head. Number one, it makes me from going too quick in the downswing. But number two, because I can feel the head, I can really start pushing that thing through. Yeah. But you want to add to no, that? I mean, you know, if, if the club feels heavy, that's not a bad feel. Right. You know, that's good. That, you should be able to sense that and use that to your advantage. Yeah, because you want to be able to sense the way the club is. Yeah. If you don't know where it is, how are you going to control it? Right. You want to sense it right on that right on that index finger of that right hand. Right. That's going to be, you're literally feeling the weight of the Yeah, so it's, it's, so it's separate. It looks like a little trigger. All right, so you don't want your fingers all jammed together like this. You want it separate. All right, so if you look down at it this way, you can see I've got a little bit of separation out here. So when I go back, I can actually feel the weight against that forefinger. If I have my fingers all jammed together, that doesn't do any different than this. There's no feel difference in that. Yeah. So you want to have a little separation. Yeah. So it's not a bad feel. I guess that's what we're trying to say. Right. Okay, next question, and this is by Paul. When trying to generate more powerful swing, I have a tendency to get too much on my toes. How do I avoid this? Um, well, I'm going to tell you, a lot of that right now, we just talked about, Paul, is you can use a chair, for example, set it up behind you, and just rest your butt on here. So if I get to the top and I'm trying to generate more power and I lunge, my weight's going out towards my toe. This weight's coming out towards me. Okay. So when I get here, just feel like, for, for those of you that have too much upper body lunge or your weight's going towards your toes, just feel like you're going like this. Throwing the arms and letting the body chase. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Free those arms up. More times than not, the body will catch the arms. Right. Okay, we, boy, that's good questions. Good crew tonight. All right. Uh, Gary, are supplements part of your game? Okay, so yes and no. If you define a supplement as a Hershey's bar and a Coke, then boy, I'm all in. I'm glad you're answering it because that's what I was thinking. Vitamins? <laughs> I mean, I take, I, I, uh, I don't take them specifically for, for the game. There are a lot of people that will drink some of that. Uh, you know, protein and water and stuff like that. And and I don't think it will hurt you at all. I can't, personally can't stand the taste of it. It makes me gag, so uh, I don't do any of this stuff. <laughs> but, well, yes, I mean, I take a lot of uh, uh, peanuts with raisins and things like that in, in the golf bag when I'm playing golf. Um, now, after and before, I might eat something that's really good for me, a hot dog or something like that. But, uh, I try to keep the good stuff I try to save for the golf course. yeah and definitely you know word of advice you know is, is make sure you're hydrated enough before you go out um, you know, make sure you have plenty of water or, or 
Gatorade or Powerade or whatever it is, something like that, because you know you get part about three quarters of the way through and you're not hydrated enough, well then that's when things kind of want to start shutting down a little bit. So definitely make sure you are hydrated. I mean, that's something I preach to our kids constantly before they go to the tournament and things, right? Water, right? right. And, and again, you can you can buy that stuff that you just mix in the water. I would not recommend mixing any of the energy drinks. No. Uh, but, but the other stuff, I, you know, some of it's pretty good from what I understand. I just personally can't stand the taste of it. I like the I like the uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> yeah, well, that's always a good that's always a good <laughs> snack. Okay. Next question. This is from Karen. What is the main key to power? Well, the faster you swing your arms, the more the more club head speed you're going to generate. But you also that has to be supported by your body and what it's doing. I mean, if you have somebody that, that is just sitting in a chair you know, or on their knees and they're swinging a club, I mean, Jimmy Siglowski did this. I think he hit 280. Yeah. Yeah, you know, off of his knees. Well, without being on his knees, he can hit 400. All right, so. So, but, but 280 yards of that 400 was generated by him swinging his arms, basically. Yeah. So, it's an arm swing in combination with how your body's moving. Exactly. Uh, if your body's moving correctly, it supports that arm swing. If it's not moving correctly, then your arms and hands have to make up for what we call a faulty field. Yeah. And, you know, of course, you know, the given to is, you know, obviously strength, you know, how strong you are, did you hit the ball in the sweet spot or not. Right. So, you know, those are those are definitely some givens, but you know, what we're talking about here is, is things we see every day. Every day. So, you know, these are definitely things if, if everything's working in the right sequence, you gotta be able to get these things going. I don't care how weak, how strong, or what you are, but you've got to be able to get these going to get that speed and that effortless feel. Well, I mean one of the things that I that I do is students I have Put their grip on and have them take their right hand off. And I put my right hand off the amount of pressure I put on it. And they always say, You hold it that tight. I go, Yeah, but here's the difference, right? So go ahead and hold on to this and kind of face the camera. Right, go ahead and hold it up this way. So once I have them grip that club, I say, Okay, I want you to grip this at a at a one, and I can turn the club in their hands. I can now grip it at about a nine. So their wrist should move, but the club shouldn't twist. And then I will push back on them. Okay, and that's what always happens. They fall backwards. So now keep the fingers firm, loosen the wrists, soften the elbows and shoulders. Yeah. That's how you gotta get the feel. So you have to think of your hands as a vice, but your arms, your your joints are nothing but like a rubber hose. Yeah. You know, another thing you can do is, is make a fist, and after you make a fist, just stand here and just shake your arms. Right. But keep the keep the pressure of the fist. Though. Right. You know, that's that's the same same thing that you're doing. Just keep that pressure in there, and because if you're you're swinging these things with some speed, you better have some pressure built. Right. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, you know what? That is all of our questions. You guys had some great questions today. Keep sending in ideas for us. Uh, you know, for what things you want to see. And now, I need my air guitar. It is time for us all, and you can type it in your chat bar down there, to say <laughs> happy birthday to Diane. There you go. Okay, so here's a Beatles song. Today's your birthday. You're going to have a good time. You're not, I don't know the song. Oh, okay. <laughs> happy birthday. It's so boring. I don't know the song. <laughs> Okay, anyways, <laughs> thanks, man. Great time. Happy birthday. Happy Diana. birthday. We'll see you next time.